I'm Vonna Hammerschmidt, because I'm going to talk to you about a new competition that we're bringing in, and that competition is the Right Turn Glider. It's going to be a pilot this year. As you can see in the rules, um, this is a pilot. Students are going to construct a glider. It doesn't say what you have to use for materials. It doesn't say the dimensions of the glider. All it tells you is what the glider has to do and how you're going to launch the glider. We're going towards more open-ended competitions now where we don't spell out you must use balsa wood, you must use quarter inch by quarter inch balsa wood as we spell out for the uh, bridges or you must use uh, a Victor mousetrap. So we're trying to get away from that and make these activities more open-ended. So as you can see in the rules, Uh, so the only thing they're going to do is build this glider and they're going to launch it. I'm so everything you need to fly the glider has to be on the glider. And you launch it from this tabletop launcher. It has a five degree incline built into the launch, into the launch device. It launches off of a tabletop and away it goes. And it goes out and makes a right turn and lands on an X on the sidewalk that is 40 meters from the launch point. So that includes the right turn. For the middle school, it just goes a straight 40 meters and lands on an X. So that's the difference. So it has a hook on the bottom, just, just like you have in the gliders that you've been doing for middle school so far. Um, you can have wheels on it if you want. You can have skids on it if you want, but you have to realize that they can't interfere with the launch. And to be honest with you, the ones that I saw at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory competition in 2003 didn't have wheels. They just skidded along the ground when they landed and they worked perfectly. No restrictions on size, no restrictions on materials. They just have to have that hook on the bottom to launch. No power of any kind once they get airborne. No GPS control devices. It's all in the pitch and position of the wings and the tail that makes it fly out and make that right turn. Just like in a regular airplane when they adjust the flaps, well, you can't adjust the flaps in flight, obviously, but you can um, adjust the wings before flight so that you get that right turn <coughs> and, and then it lands on the X. And believe me, there were gliders that landed, put their nose right on the X. It was amazing. Could I build one? No. But I don't have to. I just have to tell you about it. OK. So there's a, a lot of verbiage in here about the launch device. And it has to have this kind of spring with this kind of load and this kind of hook, et cetera, et cetera. And you can look at that when you get ready to, to build the launch platform. But here's what it looks like. And it's very detailed. You, does it not look like an engineer from JPL? So if I can look at this verbiage. And, and look at this schematic, and my neighbor and I, neither one of us are carpenters, can build the device. I, I know you can, too. And the best part about it, it's not really heavy. It can just stand up in the corner, so it's, it's easy to store. So all of those center directors out there who say, what am I supposed to do with this thing? It's fine. It's, it's fine. So you've seen the launch device. Uh, there's there's judging, judging uh, suggestions here. Basically, when you launch it, if parts fall off, your launch is disqualified. If parts fall off when you land, that's not a good thing, but it's OK. But you do get two tries, so you don't want it to explode on landing. You want it to be able to go up again. It tells you all everything you need to know about where you position the target <laughs> um, and so on. And um, shows, you, shows you how to put it on the tabletop. Yes. Is the competition held indoors or outdoors? Outdoors, obviously. Yeah, outdoors. And I, I want to tell you, if you're used to building our little gliders that we use that, with our little handheld launchers that are about this big, the wingspan on these is about this big, just to give you a tip, a heads up. So they're going to be much different. You can use a lot of the same principles that we use in our current glider competition. But this is a much bigger version and much more dramatic. 
So I'm just going through this so you know that there's very detailed instructions and schematics and so on so you know exactly what it has to look like when you decide to do your test launch. And these rules will be available online. For middle school, everything is exactly the same except your glider is going to go straight, so you don't have to worry so much about the pitch and position of the wings to turn. You're building it for distance, really. All right. Now I'm going to show you this lovely device that was constructed. Hopefully, you'll be able to see this. So where do I have to have this? That's OK. Just. Well, can you see it on that table, or do I have to have it over here for the TV folks? For the TV folks, don't I have to be here? OK. So I don't know where it needs. I'll just hold it. So there are, uh, there's a supplier given in the rules for the spring and the hook that you're going to use. And uh, it's not expensive. Uh, I bought two strings and two hooks, and I think it was $7 or something like that. The supplier is local right here in L.A., so I ordered it and had it within two days, so that wasn't a problem. It gives you the specifics. It says to use quarter-inch wood, and we did use quarter-inch wood. It says that you have to have a slot for the hook, so you see that we have a slot for the hook. And the hook attaches to the spring. And then to load it, I hope you can still see it. To load it, you just pull it up like so. Pull it up like so all the way up to the end where I'm not going to load it because I don't want the thing to go off and scare me to death. It goes all the way up to this area, and there's a pin that goes in here to secure the block when it, the spring is stretched and it's loaded. You put your glider on the hook on the top here. You pull the pin, and away it goes. And it's very dramatic. It's very exciting. Yes. Will the table have to be leveled to the ground? The table should be leveled to the ground. It would be nice if it was. Actually, um, we, we used a little guy that looks like this to make sure that we had the 5% incline. So I think the important thing is that, that you, I mean, 5 degree. The important is, is that you have the 5 degree incline. So what this is is you place this on the edge of the device once it's situated on the table and there's a and it's set to five degrees and there's a little level here so you can see if um, if it's level it means and it's set to five degrees it means you have the actual five degree angle if it's such that maybe your table isn't quite level then maybe you need to adjust it by putting some shims under the legs or something so that you so that it's it's level I don't think these are very expensive my neighbor had this I, I don't have this in my garage, I, but it's, trust me, it's not hard. If he and I can do it, the only reason he helped me is because he has better tools than I do. You know, I have a tree saw and some bush clippers. Oh, that's okay. I, I think they can get the gist of this. I don't think you need to see it up close and personal. So it's just... What I would do if I were to modify this a little bit, I'd put a string or a wire on this block right here so that I could pull it nicely down through through the chute for it to launch. Because right now you have to move it with the hook, and, and it would be a little more efficient if you didn't have to use the hook to move it back and forth. And I'm always afraid once it's loaded that if I'm moving it with the hook, uh, my finger is going to get hooked up. So I, I would put that, that thing on the back put the wire on the back. Are there any questions about any of this? Because I'm just doing a quick overview of this because I want Ben to have plenty of time to do his Rube Goldberg. Yes. One question and then I'll hand it over. Okay. Uh, but Vanna, um, th will you provide the source for the spring? It's in mentioned? the rules, actually. I'll show you where it is. It's right up here. It says something about McMaster's in here, and that's McMaster's car, I believe, is the name of the – right here. Available from McMaster's car, part number is blah, blah, blah. The hook, okay, so there it is, right there. Any other questions? 
Uh, yeah, I had a couple of questions. I, I was curious. Um, the plane itself, it has to go straight and then make a turn and go... Am I reading this right? Is this replacing the actual glider competition this year? Well, we're thinking of this replacing... This is a pilot for this year. Oh. And if, if we were to adopt it after we get the, the kinks out, it wouldn't be used as an actual competition until 17, 18. Oh, okay. So 16, 17 is still the propeller plane for high school and the regular glider for middle school. But if we, if we adopt this one for the next um, iteration of Mesa Day competitions, then this would be it. Oh, just a, just a clarification as I'm reading this. It says target and launch on the second page. Over it says the target is 29 feet in front of the launch hook, and then it has to turn and go an additional 28 feet. Mm -hmm. am I, am I reading Over that to right? the X. So it right. actually turns at 30 it feet. Goes, approximately. Well, when it when it gets launched, it you know, it gets thing. airborne, and then you'll see it turn. Interesting. It does work. I've seen it. Yeah, the I JPL saw competition. I 60 of them do that. Really? Yeah, we do the JPL competition. It's great. Yes. Yeah. So thank These you. These are great. You're welcome. Any other questions, Juanita? Okay. So let me know if you decide to use this. I'll try to give you as much guidance as I can from my, from my, what I have stored in my brain from when I actually saw it. And if you do use it and you find that it has yeah. some problems, let me know that too, because we are, we're going to need to know that when we meet next year uh, to talk about the JPL, I mean, to talk about the new Mesa Day competitions. Yes, question. Vana, so what you're saying is if we wanted to get industrious and build this, we could do this as a Mesa group activity, even though it's not a competition, just work the bugs out, so to speak? What or? I would suggest you do if you decide you want to do this is please talk to your center director, because I think you would want your students to be able to demonstrate it at your prelims, and maybe de and then, and then, if they so decide, decide demonstrate it at your regional Mesa Day. So be sure to talk to your your director about that if you decide to do it, because I think it would, would be really nice if the students would would do this as a demonstration for other students at prelims in Mesa Day. Yeah. I had a question about the target. Oh, you downloaded. Um, is the does the glider have to? Is it scored based on where the glider initially lands, hits the ground, or is it where it stops? No, I see. It's where it hits the ground. Where it hits the ground. And it gives the specifications for the size of the X and exactly where it has to be placed. But yes, it's scored. Um, some of them get very close, believe it or not, and they, they try to put a, they have spotters that, that uh, pinpoint exactly where it landed. Just like we do with the glider now. Yes. I mean, when we talk about the technology behind it, is it because the glider is not exactly working right that it goes to the right? Why does it list over to the right? Because of the way that you design and position the wings and design and position the tail pieces. Mm -hmm. In the glider that we do now, we want every, everything to be really symmetrical on both sides because we want it, you know. To, but on this one, you'll see that the wings are... I don't want to give it all away because I want the students to do the research on this and figure out how to make it happen. But the, the wings are skewed a little bit and the pitch is a little bit different. And the same with the tail. That's all I'm going to tell you, though. I want the students to research it and figure out what works best. And if they research it using smaller gliders, that would be a great thing to do. Instead of using all the balsa wood and then finding out they didn't that need a new design. Any other questions? That's it. Great, thank you. I look forward to hearing from you. Let me know if you have any questions. Um, my email, uh, I'm vhammers at chapman.edu. So if you need to talk to me, let me know. Or you can always email statewide and they'll forward it.